that we can trust the Lord. Yes. Amen. Turn with me in the Bible this morning to 2 Timothy, the third chapter. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. We are without a doubt, unless, and I don't know how you could disagree unless you have your head stuck in the sand or whatever, but we are without a doubt living in the last days. Amen. And the Bible is very clear about the way things will be yes. as the end draws closer. I've been reading the Word of God since I guess I was five or six years old. And the more I read it, the more real it is to me. The more I open it up and I read the things that Jesus said, the way that it would be in the day that we live in, and then I look around at the way it is in the day that we live, and that makes Jesus, the words that Jesus said, even more real to me today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't believe there's a God out there today, that takes a special kind of stupid. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Because there has to be a God. Hallelujah. If you believe that we came from monkeys, that takes a special kind of stupid. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. But I'm glad today that I know that I know that I know that Jesus is real. Yeah. I'm glad today that I know that I know the Word of God is real. Amen? And if I ever doubted it, all I have to do is open up the pages and read and see what it tells me and how things will be in the day that we live in. And it's almost like reading the headlines from Amen. our newspaper. True. If you've got 2 Timothy, the third chapter, the first verse, the Bible says, This know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now listen to this. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Sound like any generation that you know of? Amen. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Come on. Did you hear that? Despisers of those that have done something to them. Doesn't say that. Mm -hmm. It says just they despise those that are good. good. Amen. Come on. Today in the hour that we live in, if you stand for anything, there are some people that despise you. That's right. They think you're crazy. True. They think that, well, you can just enjoy whatever. Even I'm talking about people who claim to be born again Christian mm -hmm. today will tell others if they feel bad about something or if they think that something is wrong, well, just go ahead and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. There's no condemnation in, in the Lord. There's a, you're just underneath that old condemnation of man. Just enjoy yourself. If it feels good, do it. Mm -hmm. That's a saying that the world has, and apparently it's creeped itself into the church because that's the way a lot of the church feels. If it feels good, do it. Amen? Amen. If it feels good, do it. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Uh-oh. What are we talking about? We're talking about the last days. We're talking about perilous times. Men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. They will have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, join the club? That's not what it says. No. From such, turn away. away. Amen? From such, turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lust. We've never lived in a more lustful generation. Amen. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now that word perilous there means the reducing of strength. It means difficult. And what did he say? He said that perilous times shall come. So today we live in perilous times. That word means dangerous. So today the Word of God teaches us that the last days will be dangerous times. Amen? Right. Fierce times. Furious times. A time of reducing of strength. Right. Now that can, that can go two or three different ways, but it certainly means the reducing of the strength of conviction and morals that people have, but also everybody you talk to, they're just wore out. Right. They're just tired. Uh -huh. 
Have you ever wondered why in the world used to grandma and grandpa could get up at daylight and eat breakfast, go out work all day long in the field, or mama would work all day at home, and then they would, that afternoon, that close to dark, whatever, they'd get dressed, get cleaned up, go to church, right. come home, go and do it, go to bed, do it all over again. Amen? They had more strength than this generation has. Amen. It's almost as if somebody or something saps the strength out of people. Right. Well, the Word of God tells us in the last days there will be a reducing of strength. Right. Weak people, weak convictions, weak morals. Come on, breathe. Dangerous times. So we're living in perilous times today. Dangerous times. Amen? Amen. Used to be you could go to bed and leave your door wide open. Right. I can remember us going to bed and just leaving the screen door. Right. The screen door is open. You know, let in some cool night air. Yeah. You go to bed today and leave your door unlocked and your screen door don't think there. You're going to let in more than some cold air. Amen. Right. You're going to let in some thieves. They're going to steal you blind. Amen. Yeah. Used to. And that, and, you, and that if that's all they do, Amen. you'll be blessed. Amen? Amen. If all they do is come in and steal your stuff, then yeah. you'll be getting out on it pretty good. Yes, sir. They may not stop at stealing your stuff. They may take your life. Amen? Right. So gone are the days when you can leave your door open and go to bed. Right. Did you know used to, if you were driving down the road and you just you just needed help or you needed to pray or you needed to talk to God, well, there's a little church house. Right. I'll stop. Don't I'll get out and I'll go in because the door was unlocked. Right. Used to, they leave the door of the church unlocked in case somebody needed to pray. Amen. In case somebody needed to come in and talk to the Lord. Right. In case somebody was looking for a refuge in a storm. Right. Amen. Come on. If we left our church door unlocked today, we'd probably come back Tuesday night and wouldn't have nothing left. Uh -huh. Amen. That's right, brother. Now they break into your church when it is locked. Used right. to be a fear of God in people. Right. You never heard of people around here anyway, not in the Bible Belt. There was a fear. Now they robbed the grocery store. They robbed the filling station. They robbed the bank. They wouldn't touch the church. Amen. Right. Because they feared God. Feared. But how in the world can we think bad about the world that don't fear God when the church don't anymore? Come on, bro. Amen. Come on, Treat the house of God like a pool hall. Right. Hey, could I preach this morning? Amen. Sir, preach to us. So you can't leave the door unlocked because they steal your stuff. They break into churches now. You hear about it all the time. Amen. Stealing the music, taking the taking the the uh, guitars and taking the instruments. Right. Take, if you got any money in all from play, they'll take it too. Amen. The if they break in here, take the, take the change bucket. That's right. So gone are the days of being able to leave your door unlocked. Amen. Because why? We live in dangerous, Fearless. dangerous, perilous times. Amen. Why? Because the Bible says that in the last days, evil seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, that iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall wax cold. That's why there are dangerous times today. Amen. That's why we live in perilous times today. Right. Because men have, the love of many have waxed cold. cold. Amen? True. Where there is no love, there is hate. Where there is no love, there is no regard for life. Right. They've got that doctor on trial. I forget exactly where it said. I was watching mm -hmm. some news last night the, from that abortion clinic. That yeah. They said that would let babies after the abortion didn't work. Yeah. The baby would just be laying there for 30 minutes or longer, crying or whatever. Yeah. And he'd turn to a nurse and say, in essence, go snip its head off. They take a pair of scissors and walk over there and clip its spinal cord. Yeah. Amen. Right. You mean you think they will they'll do something to him? They already dismissed three of the murder charges. <clears throat> they already took three of the murder charges off the board. Mm. Now he very well may get life. He needs to get life. He may very well get death penalty. I don't know what he's gonna get. But you can't do that kind of things if you have love. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But because the love of many has waxed cold. cold. Amen. Used to you felt an obligation to your husband. Used to you felt an obligation to your wife. Right. But husband's love waxes cold. Wives, their love waxes cold and they find somebody else. True. The love of many has waxed cold today. We live in dangerous times. Amen. So number one, we live in dangerous times today. The last days are going to be dangerous times and we're seeing it. Amen? True. All those people went up there to Boston going to run a marathon. 
That's all they were doing. They weren't protesting. They wasn't marching in some kind of march. They just went up to run a race for this place. Right. Perilous, dangerous. A couple of bombs go off and kill some of them. Make some of them maimed. Right. Blow off some limbs. Right. Why? Because of hate. True. The love of many. Why it's cold. And hate engrosses a nation where there is no love. Right. Amen. And a religion that preaches hate is not of God. Right. Amen. True. Preacher, what's the difference between your Bible and their Quran? Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. Come on. Jesus said, love those that hate you. Amen. Yes. Do good to those that despitefully use you. Pray for them. Yeah. What's their book say? Kill them. Kill them. Kill the infidel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Kill them. If they don't believe like we do, kill them. Jesus said, if they don't believe like, like we do, pray for them. Right. Love your enemy. Amen. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Do good to those that do bad to you. That's the difference between our God and their God. Our God is a God of love, and their God is a God of hate. Mm -hmm. Our God is a God of life, and their God is a God of death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. If you want to know what the difference is, true. One of the biggest atheists in America. I didn't hear this firsthand. I heard it from Brother Tommy. One of the biggest atheists in America was defending our faith, so to speak. He said, what do you get if somebody draws a cartoon and makes fun of Jesus? You don't get any violence. You get people praying for you or whatever. I don't know exactly what his words were. He said, what do you get when you make fun of Muhammad? Get blew up. That's the difference. Amen. You cannot equate the two because one is the God of love, Amen. compassion, and mercy. Right. We are living in the last days, and in the last days there will be dangerous, perilous times. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Number two, in the last days there will be evil times. Yes. Ephesians 5 and 14 says this, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Mm -hmm. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Did you hear that? Amen. That word evil means hurtful. It means <clears throat> diseased morally. Do you hear that? It means derelict. It means vicious. It means malice. It means mischief. One of the meanings means the devil. Bad, grievous, harmful, lewd, malicious and wicked. The days are evil. So in the last days we will have evil times. In the last days there will be perilous, dangerous times. Right. And the Bible tells us that there will be troubled times. Amen. Matthew 24 and 6, Jesus says these words, You shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Right. He would tell His disciples in John 14 and 1, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. Yeah. Paul would speak in 2 Corinthians 4 and 8, we are troubled on every side. So we see today that in the last days there will be troubled times. There will be dangerous times. Evil times. Troubled times. And with these, bring this to number four, fearful times. The Bible says in Luke 21, if you want to turn over there, Luke the 21st chapter, Luke 21 and 25. I'm going to read a few verses from this passage of Scripture. Luke 21 and 25. We're talking about the last days today. We're talking about the days that we're living in. Amen. Perilous, dangerous times. Yeah. Evil times. Troubled mm -hmm. times. <clears throat> the Bible says there shall be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and upon the earth. Distress. Upon the earth there will be distress. Did you hear that? Yeah. You know what that word distress means? It means anguish. 
For the rod, it means anxiety. You see, people say, what's the world coming to? It's coming to an end. Right. And the Bible tells us the warning signs to look for. Amen. Amen. You know when there's a disease going around or some kind of bad sickness, they say, well, these are the symptoms right. to tell whether you have it or not. Right. So when we begin to look into the Word of God and we begin to see the symptoms, yeah. the signs, yeah. where we are at in the, on the God's clock, on God's calendar, we can see that we are in the last days. Right. Distress or anxiety. I've never seen so many people with anxiety problems in my life. Amen? Amen. Anxiety. Distress of nations. Perplexity. You know what that word perplexity means? It means the feeling of having no way out. To be at a loss mentally. To stand in doubt. Are you listening to me this morning? Amen. All of these things that are affecting men and women today. Because of everything that's going on around them. Because of everything that's going on in their life. He said the sea and the waves would be roaring. Verse 26, he says, men's hearts failing them for fear. Amen. Did you hear me? Never seen so many people afraid today. Wow. Scared. Amen. True. Men's hearts failing them for fear. Amen. Because of alarm, because of fright. Right. It, it means to, you know what, one of the words there for men's heart filling them for fear, one of the words for the definition in the Greek for the word fear there is terror. Stay with me this morning. Terror. Amen. What has gripped the heart of this nation more than once and just did in Boston? Terrorism. Amen. Right. Men's hearts failing them for fear because of terror. Amen. Right. Terrorized. God tells us these things in the book. And Jesus said that these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. These are the beginning of sorrows, folks. Amen. Right. Men's heart failing them for fear. Why? It goes on to say, I'm in verse 26, Luke 21 and 26. Jesus said, men's heart, hearts failing them for fear. And for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Did you hear that? Why are people so fearful today? Why is the spirit of anxiety so strong today? Because of the fear, because of looking at the things that are coming upon the earth. Because we're living in perilous times. Because we're living in evil times. Because we're living in troubled times. On the one hand, we are living in the, at the greatest moment in the history of mankind. On the other hand, we're living at the most dangerous, the most evil and the most troubled time that man has ever seen. But Jesus said there would be tribulation like never has been before, nor ever shall be again. Amen. I'm trying to tell you today, look at the signs around you. Look at the symptoms we are living in the last days. And this book tells us all about it. Amen. Men's hearts felling them for fear, for looking after the things which are coming upon the earth. Right. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Amen. Amen. These things must come to pass. Jesus said, when you see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, I, I don't have a college degree, but if God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, that means fear comes from another source. Fear comes from someone else. Fear comes from another place other than God. Amen? Fear comes from the enemy. If he can grip your heart with fear, if he can grip your heart with anxiety, if he can get you to looking at the things around you that are coming up on the earth, instead of looking at God's Word, instead of looking to, toward God's redemption, he can get you troubled. He can get you afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear. So we see here today that we live in perilous, dangerous times. We live in evil times. We live in troubled times. And fourth, we live in fearful times. Amen. There is a spirit of fear and it doesn't come from God. All right. And through all of this, men seek for the answer. Right. Amen. True. It's as though... Man, I sure wish there was an answer. I sure wish there was a place I could go to find the answers. Yeah, come on. God has given us the 
place to go. But we wander around, man wanders around as if they're blind. I sure wish there was an answer to these problems. I wish, sure wish I could. This is what the church does. I sure wish I could get some peace of mind. I wish, sure wish I knew what God's will was for my life. We wonder, see, we leave the book. We, we, don't, we don't have time for that. We want a cloud to open up. We want a voice from God. We want a voice from, from the heavens, which is God's voice, to speak to us. Wow. Yay, I say unto thee. Open the book. He's already said, yay, I say unto thee. Wow. He's speaking to you from Genesis to Revelation. Amen. This is the answer. This is the place to look for your answers today. Come on, preach. So man goes around looking. Right. What do you do when someone breaks into your house? You start looking for something right. to defend yourself. True. What do you do? There's a, in case of emergency. Mm -hmm. What's the world say? In case of emergency, dial nine one one. Amen. Today, if somebody's trying to break into your house, they say dial nine. One one. Today, if somebody's trying to kill you, they say dial nine one one. It takes an emergency in times of emergency, in cases of emergency, they say dial nine one one. Yeah. Well, God has a nine one one for you today. Amen. Turn to Psalms, the ninety first chapter. This should be the easiest passage of scripture for you to remember today because 911 has been drilled into our heads since we was little. Amen. Wow. Those of us who were born, there was already telephones anyway. Amen. 911 emergency. Call on it. Well, let's find out what we're supposed to do in times of emergency. What do we do in perilous times? What do we do in evil times? What do we do in troubled times? What is the hope? What is the answer in times of fear? Psalms, the 91st chapter. This is God's 911. Amen? Come on. Psalms 911. 91 and 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Help! Somebody call 911. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. When people are in trouble, when they don't have one, they, they say, help. Somebody call 911. This world needs help today. We can turn to Psalms 91 and 1 and find out what that help is. If you're, if you're in distress today, open the Bible to Psalms. Open the King James because I ain't sure what the other versions say, but I can tell you what the King James says. Open it up to Psalms 91 and 1. Theirs may not comfort you as much as this one does. I know theirs ain't got as much truth in it as this one does. Maybe you can glean enough from it to keep you being scared completely to death, but if you really want the antidote, go out and get your one why you can still get them. Get you a 16, 11, turn it to Psalms 91 and 1 and read, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. When you're in trouble today, turn to God's 911. When you need help today, turn to God's 911. Amen. Oh, what does he say? I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Did you hear that? He's my fortress. He's my refuge, Brother Dave. What are you going to do? I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do if things just keep getting worse? I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do when you start scraping the bottom of the barrel? Little widow woman, I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do, Prophet Elijah? Up there on the mount? When the brook dries up, I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do when you get out in the desert and there ain't no water? And you everywhere you look, you're thirsty and your tongue's so dry, it's sticking to the roof of your mouth. I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do when you get thrown into the lion's den? I'm going to trust God. What are you going to do when you get cast into the fiery furnace? I'm going to trust God. He is my fortress. He is my refuge. In God I will trust. It's more than just some catchy saying on the money. Amen. It's written on the table of my heart. When I'm in trouble, I'm going to trust God. When I'm sick, I'm going to trust God. When I need help, I'm going to trust God. Amen. He's my fortress. Yeah. He's my refuge. Yeah. You say, preacher, are you crazy? That's okay. When I'm crazy, I'm going to trust God. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to trust Him. That's right. I'm going to trust Him. Yeah. I'm going to trust Him. 
I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him. If you're looking for that old dead head that just staggered out of the cemetery, he's down the road. Amen. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to trust God. On, he's my provider. Yeah. He's my healer. He's my answer in the time of need. He is my 911 today. Amen. Right. Oh my goodness. He's my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust. Help. Somebody call 911. Yeah. Amen. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Yeah. I'm in verse 3. And from the noise of pestilence. Mm. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Amen. And under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Amen. Somebody say help. Help. Oh, I'm finding help. Amen. I'm finding help today. It ain't in the Quran. Amen. It ain't in your best life now. Come on. It's in, oh, it's in the book, Amen. the Bible, the Word of God. Yeah. Amen. Come Aren't on. you glad that it's been preserved for you? Yeah. Oh, it would be so sad today if we didn't have God's Word. Amen. Yeah. What hope would we have? Right. Oh, listen to this. Where did I get? Verse 5? Yeah. Psalm 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. That's number 3. And he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth. Shall be thy shield and, the, and, thy, and your buckler. Amen. Verse 5 says this. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Are you, are you seeing how this ties in to the perilous, dangerous times? Amen. Are you seeing how this ties in to the evil times, to the fearful times, to the troubled times? Brother David, he said, yeah. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror mm. by night, mm. nor for the arrow that flieth by day, right. nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Listen, you better get a hold of this. Come on. Amen. You better, I think I'm going to have some cards printed up. All right. Amen. That says, In case of emergency, Psalm 911. Amen. Amen. Turn it. I tell you what, you know, sometimes you don't have the disease, so they give you something to prevent you from getting it. All right. This is this is pretty good preventive medicine in here. Amen. Instead of just running to it when you ever get in trouble. Yeah. Amen. There's pretty good preventive medicine in here. Yeah. We wouldn't have to go through a lot of things we go through if we'd have turned to this first. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If we'd have made sure we followed the book. Yeah. If people followed the book, the prisons would be empty. Come on, preach. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If people follow the book, I don't believe there'd be anybody on the leather couch telling their problems to somebody. Amen. Follow the book. Amen. There's some preventive medicine in here. Thank God. Oh, when you get in trouble, God's got a 911 for you. Amen. Listen to this. Listen to this. Don't lose me. Don't lose me. I'm just close here a minute or two. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. There's still protection to be found in God. Amen. Amen. For he shall give his angels charge over thee. To keep thee in all thy ways. Brother, the way you're reading, I'm telling you, where the, where I'm telling you what to call when you got emergencies. Open it up to 911. Amen. When you're fearful, when you're troubled, when times are dangerous, whenever you feel like you're so full of fear, you can't, can't even think straight. Turn to God's 911. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Brother Billy, where is that secret place? Oh, just run to God. He'll open the door. Amen. Find you a place. I know it's old fashioned, I know it's not preached anymore. How, many, how long has it been since you see one of them TV preachers get down and talk? Amen. I know it's not practiced very much anymore. Find your old fashioned honestly. Oh, God, I'm in trouble today. I'm in trouble. I need your refuge. I need your shield. I need you to be my buckler. Hallelujah. I need you to be my help. The Bible says he is a present help in time of trouble. Amen. Come on, he is our help today. Amen. He is our help. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Psalms 9 1 1. Guaranteed. Oh, somebody help. Help. Somebody call 911. I'm giving you the answer today. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Amen. My, my, my. Oh. He will bear you up in his hands. In the, oh, let me, let me slow down. They shall bear thee up in their hands. Uh -huh. These angels that he gives charge over you. Right. Lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Amen. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon yeah. shalt thou trample under feet. Amen. Amen. Why? Stay with me. Verse 14. Because he hath set his love upon me. Come on. Did you hear that? Yes. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he hath known my name, he shall call upon me, and I will answer him. All right. I will be with him in trouble. Deliver him and honor him. Amen. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Proverbs says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Yes, sir. Help somebody call 911 if you're out there today and you need help. Fear has gripped you so bad you can't even sleep at night. You're afraid somebody's going to kill you or kill your family. Right. You're too afraid you can go out in public. You're afraid somebody's going to blow you up. Mm. There's help today. Amen. Amen. Am I telling you that if you have this, if you have this relationship that I'm talking about with Jesus, am I telling you that you won't die in the hole? You see, <clears throat> am I telling you that you won't get... Some of them people out there in Boston running that marathon that got blew up. More than likely... There's one or two believers in there anyway. I know the, the, the percentages of believers seems to get smaller and smaller, but oh, surely out of 27,000 people, somebody out there was believing, amen? Amen. So, I'm not telling you those things can't happen to us. I certainly believe that sometimes those things are diverted because of people's faith, amen? But, we get our eyes on this temporal life. Right. This old carnal man of clay. Amen. This is not it, folks. There is an eternity. There is an everlasting life. There is a soul. There is a spirit within your being that will live forever somewhere. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells us to not be afraid of them that can kill the body. Why? It says after that, no more can they do. Amen. It says that after that, have no more that they can do to you. Amen? Well, Be not afraid of those that can kill the body because once they've done that, that's all they can do. That's the worst thing they can do to you. They can't take away Jesus out of your heart. They can't take away your salvation. They can't take away your eternal life. I like Polycarp. Well, you're talking about a man with a backbone. Stood there 80 plus years old in front of the rulers and said, Listen, the fire that you're threatening me with, because see, they're fixing to tie him to a stake and burn him up if he don't denounce Jesus. Mm. If he don't, if he don't uh, uh, turn his back on the Lord. He said, listen, the fire that you're threatening me with today, that fire will go out. In other words, you're going to kill this body, but what else are you going to do? Right. When Paul went to the chopping block of Nero, mm. his attitude was one of, you can take this old head off. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Paul said to live is for Christ, but to die is gain. Yeah. Come on, break. See, we got it all turned around. Right. With going, oh, they're gonna kill me. And what's your point? Yeah. They're gonna get you to home a little bit faster, amen. You can you can take my head off. But to live is for Christ. To die is gain. Amen. Paul said in one place, I stick around for your benefit. Yeah. It'd be better for me if I went on home. Yeah. Amen. Right. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. Fear not those that can kill the body. Because after that, they can do nothing else to you. Amen. Amen. But then it says, but I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. In other words, I'll tell you who you need to fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. We shouldn't have no fear of anybody today but God. That's right. Amen. Amen. A reverent fear. Not, oh no, it's God. I'm not going to be too close to him. No, 
a reverent fear, a holy fear. Realizing that today all man can do is take your life, period. That's it. They can do nothing else. Amen? Amen. They can do nothing else. Oh, God's got an answer to everything. Amen? Amen? If we just open up the book and read it. Right. To die is gain. That, that scripture is Philippians 1 and 21 if you want to write that down. <laughs> Paul said, For to me to live is Christ, to die is gain. We must place our trust in Him today. He that dwelleth in the secret place. He said, I will put my trust in you. Amen? If you don't have your trust in God today, it talks about you in the book too. Isaiah 31 and 1 says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help that stay on horses, that trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Did you hear what he said there? Woe unto you if you're looking for help in anything else other than God today. Woe unto you if you go down to Egypt. Look, you ain't going to find no help in the world. Come on now. You ain't going to find no help in the world. That's right. Woe unto you if you trust in horses and chariots because there's a lot of them. Yeah. Amen? Wouldn't be, the first time, <laughs> wouldn't be the first time a great army got wiped out. Amen? Right. Woe unto you if you're trusting in the strength of man. Mm -hmm. Woe unto you if you have not turned to the Holy One of Israel because He is our only refuge and place of safety today. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it. How do you get into something? You go through the door. Amen. There's one door today to get into this place of safety. On the ark, if you'll notice the directions that God gave to Noah, there was one way to get into the ark. There is one way to get into this place of safety today, and that is through Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life. No other way. Can't get in no other way. Amen. Only one door to the ark. There's only one door into this tower. Right. Of his name. Right. The psalmist wrote like this, and I'm closing. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. Psalm 46 and 1 says, God is our refuge and strength mm -hmm. and very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. Amen. Well, oh, yeah, we're living in dangerous times. Yes, sir. We're living in evil times. We're living in troubled times. Right. We're living in fearful times. Absolutely. But what we're going to do, we're going to trust the Lord. Amen. So you better get a hold of that. Yes. If you ain't never heard anything else I preached, you better get a hold of this because time's going to get worse. Amen. Amen. True. Jesus said these things must come to pass, right. but the end is not yet. Amen. Another place he talks about the beginning of sorrows. Right. You think, oh man, it's as bad as it's going to get. No, hold on, it's going to get worse. Amen. <clears throat> oh, but we got a refuge today. We've got a high tower. We've got a place to run. Oh, we've got a living God. Amen. A living God. <laughs> Psalms 121. Psalms 121 says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. See, God don't sleep today. Amen. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. If the world ever needed the answer today, they sure do need it now. Amen. Amen. If they ever needed the Lord before, they sure do need Him now. Amen. If the church 
ever needed to stand up and preach the truth and proclaim the name of Jesus, we sure do need to do it now. Amen? In the midst of a world that's drowning and needs help, it's time for us to throw out the lifeline and say, Jesus saves! Jesus saves! There is no other way. But Brother Billy, you will offend some. I got news for you. I'd rather offend some of them and cause them to think and look to Jesus than I would to pat them on the back and let them just split hell wide open. Amen. Amen. You cannot get, if you're going to preach the truth, you cannot get by without offending somebody. Right. Amen. Amen. Brother Hinton used to say, you can't please everybody, son. Just do what you have to do to please the Lord and let Him take care of the rest. All right. Amen. Truth. Offense is, somebody's, somebody's going to be offended. That's right. Amen. But listen, there's not one soul in hell today that takes comfort in the fact that you, did, that you did not offend them in this life by telling them the truth. That's right. They're not in hell today thinking, well, at least they didn't offend me over on the other side. They'd rather you have offended them and told them the truth. Right. At least get them to thinking about this Jesus. Get them to thinking about this way that you're talking about. Amen. Amen. And let the Spirit of God prick their heart with the truth. Mm. If they ever needed a lifesaver thrown out, a helping hand outreached Brother Dave, they need it today. Right. If man ever needed an oasis in the desert, he needs it today. If the church ever needed to wake up and arise, they need it today. Amen. If we ever needed the truth, we need it today. Right. If we ever needed a 911 in case of an emergency, we need it today. Yes, sir. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my God, my fortress. In Him will I trust. Yes. If you need help today, Amen. turn to Jesus. Right. And do it today because, my friend, none of us are promised tomorrow. Amen. Don't put it off. We're living in the last days, yes, but there's an answer for that. Times are rough, but there's an answer for that. Yeah. There is a spirit of fear, but there is an antidote for that today. On, is there not a balm in Gilead? Oh, yes, there is. On, and buddy. that balm is Jesus Christ right. and Him crucified. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Someone else have something this Praise morning before we